Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 9, we'll learn how to build a query, apply a multi-field sort to the query, and a criteria filter. In this lesson, we have the same mission that we had in the last lesson. The boss wants a list of all the customers we have from New York State sorted by last name. More importantly, I want to create a query to do this so I can pull it up at a moment's notice anytime in the future. To create a query, click on the Create tab, and then over here under the Queries section, you'll see a Query Wizard and then Query Design. Now the Query Wizard is okay for making some of the more advanced queries, but we're only going to make a very simple query right now, and I want to teach you how to do this from scratch. So come over here and click Query Design. The first thing that you'll see is a blank query is created in the background. Right now it says Query 1. And you'll see the Show Table window. Now a query can get its data from one or more tables or one or more other queries or you can see a list of both of them now we only have one table in our database right now so that's the only thing that we can pull data from but later on when we have multiple tables and different queries we can actually build queries off of all of those things for now let's keep it simple let's just click on customer T click on the add button and you'll notice the customer T goes into the query back here. Now if I had additional tables or queries that I wanted to add, I could do that now, but I don't. Just the one table is fine. Click on close. And now you're in the query. Down below under here, you'll see different columns. On the left hand side it says field, table, sort, show, criteria, and or. Now I will tell you, this is one of the stranger things that you'll see in Access. This is one of the weirdest screens to understand, but once you get the hang of it, it's really quite simple. Basically it works like this. Up here is the table that we're getting the data from. Down here are the fields or columns for the query. So essentially, we take the information that we want to see from the table and bring it down below. So let's say I want to see first name and last name in my query. Click and drag first name and drop it right down here in the first column. Now do the same thing with last name. There's last name. Click and drag and drop it down here into the second column. It's that easy. You can see here's the fields, first name, last name, the table that they're from shows up down below here. We only have one table right now. If you had multiple tables, you might see different table names down here. And that's how you put fields into your query. It's very simple. Now, to see the results that the query is going to produce, take your mouse and click right here on the Run button. See where it says Results? There's a Run button. Looks like an exclamation point. Go ahead and click on that now. And there are the results of the query. Now all I asked for at this point was show me a list of all the customers first name and last name. That's it. It's not sorted yet. There's no filter. I just told the query show me all the customers. Show me their first name and last name. Access gave us exactly what we asked for. Let's say in addition to first name and last name I also want to see the phone number. Perhaps the reason the boss wants this list is to have someone call all of these customers. So let's add phone number to this query. First, we need to go back into Design View. Remember when we were working on our table? We had Data Sheet View and Design View. Same thing over here. There's our button to go back into Design View. If you drop this down, you'll see there's the Data Sheet View. A couple of other views are in here. Don't worry about those for now. And there's Design View click on design view and it puts you back into the query design window. So to add another field just find it up here in the table where's phone number there it is right there 
Now, here's a trick. You can click and drag it like I showed you earlier, or just double click on it. Watch this. Click, click, and there it goes. It drops right down there into the next column. Now, go ahead and run your query again, and you'll see first name, last name, and now phone number. The query will display just the information that you want to see. Now, how do we sort this information? Well, we could use the same sort and filter buttons right here in the data sheet view, but those don't necessarily get saved with the query. Here's what I want you to do. Go back into design mode, and right down under here, under the field name, you'll see there's a sort row. This is where we specify the sort for the query. So for example, let's say I want to sort by first name. Click inside this box here, you'll see a drop down arrow. Click on that. There's ascending, descending, and not sorted. Let's pick ascending, and now run the query. Notice the results are sorted by first name. All right, back to design view. If you want to sort by last name, first turn this sort off, say not sorted, and then sort only by last name. And now run the query, and you'll see it's sorted just by last name. Now what I'd like to happen is to have the record sorted by last name and then first name. So if the last names are the same, the records would then be in sort order based on the first name, which in this particular case for the Joneses, that did work. Joe came on top of Susan. However, the Smiths are backwards. Peter should be after Joe. But I didn't specify that as my sort, so how do we sort by more than one column? Welcome back into design view. Now in a query, the order in which the fields appear from left to right determines their sort order. So if I say sort both of these fields ascending, first name will get sorted first, and then last name will get sorted. So if I run this query now, you can see it's sorted by first name, and then by last name. But that's not what I want. Come back to design view. In order to get last name to sort first, I have to move last name to the left in design mode. So come down here, move right over this gray bar on top of the column. You'll see a downward pointing black arrow. Click right there, then let the mouse go. Now click on the exact same spot and drag your mouse to the left, and that will move the column, just like moving columns around in tables. Now last name will be sorted before first name is sorted. So if I run the query now, that's the sort that I'm looking for. Sorted by last name, and then where two last names are the same, it's sorted by first name. So that's how you do a multi-column sort. Okay, back to design view. Now let's save our query. This is the major benefit of using queries, is we can save this and not have to do any of this work again in the future to get the same list of customers. So I'll come up top and click on the Save button in the Quick Access Toolbar, or you can see there by the Control Tip text, it says Control S. Control S is a keyboard shortcut that you can press that will also save the query. The Save As dialog box appears. I'm going to save this as my Customer Q. No space in there. Customer Q, Q stands for Query, and then I'll click OK. Notice the customer queue appears over here in the navigation pane, and we now have a new section called Queries. Customer queue appears here on the tab as well. Now if I close the query, all I have to do in the future to run it to get the same set of customers is just double click on my customer queue, and there it is. Now we're not finished with our customer query just yet, because the boss said I only want to see customers from New York. So we have to somehow filter this list based on the state. So go back to design view. How do we filter based on the state? Well, first we have to get the state field into our query. That's easy to do. We already know how to do that. Scroll down the field list right here and find the state field. Then I'll double click on it. 
Now I've added the state field to the query. If I run the query right now, you'll see there are all the states. Now I haven't filtered it yet. Again, we could cheat and come up here and apply a filter right here, but these don't reliably get saved in the query. So go back into design mode, and down here you'll see a row that says criteria. The criteria row is essentially a filter for the query. So I'm going to come down here under state in the criteria row, and I'm going to type in NY for New York. Now I'm going to press tab, that moves me over to the right, and look what happens. New York has quotes around it now. That's fine. Basically it's saying that New York is a text value as opposed to a number value or a date value. That's what I want. We'll talk more about what those quotes mean exactly in future lessons. But now I've set up a criteria that the state has to be equal to New York. Now go ahead and run the query again. And there you can see just the customers from New York are displayed. Now, I want to save this query, but don't just click on the floppy disk save button because that's the save command. It will save this customer queue over the old customer queue. Let's use the save as command so we can change the name of the query. This is a trick that I show my students in my Microsoft Word class. If you're working on a document, say a letter, and you're writing a letter to Joe Smith, and you want to send the same letter to Sue Jones, you open it up, make a few changes, go File, Save As, and change the file name. The same thing works in here with database objects. Instead of clicking on the Save button, we're going to go to File, and then Save Object As. All right, Save Customer Queue to the default is copy of customer queue. I'm going to change this to customers from New York queue, just like that. And then I'll hit OK. The object is saved. Now I'll click on the File tab again to close that down. And here you can see, I'll open this up a little bit. Here you can see both of our queries, customers from New York and our old customer queue. You can open up the other one by double clicking on it. Notice here I now have two tabs. They're both open at the same time. There's customers from New York and just the customers. I'll close that one and then close this one. And see now how I can open up both of these at any time in the future without having to do any more work. The sort and filter, or should I say the criteria, is saved in the query. Now, if you want to make a change to this query, let's say you want to save this as customers from Pennsylvania. All you have to do is go into Design View, find your criteria, which is right over here. Double click. I'll change that to Pennsylvania. I'll go to File, Save Object As, change this to Customers from PA. Q. Hit OK. Close the File tab. And now you can see I have multiple queries over here. Now it's time for questions from the student forum. These are questions that previous students have had about the material in this lesson. The first question is, can I edit data in the query? The answer is yes, you most certainly can. Remember, Queries themselves do not store data. They're just displaying the data from the table in a different way. So even though you're only seeing last name, first name, phone number here, you can come in here and change these things. So be very careful. Don't make any changes in the query that you wouldn't normally make in the table. The next question, if I wanted to make a report for each state, would I have to make 50 separate queries? The answer, of course, is no. I'm just showing you the very basics of query design right now. Later on, I'm going to teach you how to create something called a parameter query, where you can set up a query so that the user types in the state that he wants to see when he runs the query. So we'll open the query up, it'll say enter the state, type in New York, and there's the records from New York. Close it down again and type in California, and you'll see California. That's called a parameter query, and we will cover that in a future lesson. And finally, another popular question, 
what is this asterisk on top of the list of customer fields? The asterisk is something you can add to the query if you want to see all of the fields displayed every time the query runs. This way, you can bring in the fields that you want to sort or put criteria on and then add the asterisk to see all the rest of them. And again, we'll talk about this in more detail in a future lesson. So now we know how to build tables and simple queries. In the next lesson, we'll start working on forms. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also, don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.